As a friend, I knew you were paying a friendly visit. But I also know that it will, be, it will not be right on your part to go on top of the local tree and not get all the things that you can get from the Oroko tree because you don't always go on top of the Oroko tree. So I understand that you will take advantage of a friendly visit to put in uh, a political touch, particularly as an aspirant. Um, and I thank you for coming. I also thank you for the remarks you have made. You see, some people say that human memories are short. Maybe they are right. Because if human memories are not short, some of the mistakes that we are making, we will not be making them. And yes, we have a record which some people may find a little bit not what they want to hear. But whatever people want to hear, I believe, like you have rightly said, that this period is not like any other period in the history of Nigeria. And you use two words decomposing and dissolving. I can't find any better word to describe the situation we find ourselves. It is an agonizing situation for you, obviously, and more so for me. But I want to emphasize the point on which you ended. The Nigerian situation, bad as it is, would only be put right by Nigerians at the forefront of our situation. So, Nigerians have to raise themselves up to do what needs to be done. You are back on the road. And you are right in saying that wherever you go now, one of the things you hear is that Nigeria is not at the table. But why shouldn't Nigeria be at the table? What does it cost Nigeria to be at the table? What should it cost Nigeria to be at the table? I would think four things, which I was reminded earlier this morning. One is knowledge. A 
if Nigeria is not at the table, maybe the knowledge that we should have of ourselves, of our situation, of our region, of our continent, and indeed of the world in which we live in, maybe if that knowledge is not adequate. If the knowledge is adequate, we will do what is right, when it is right, and how it is right. The second is vision. What is the vision that we have? And if you have no vision, you may have eyes, you are blind. And I believe that is part of our situation in Nigeria. The third is passion. And when you said, and that's we talked earlier that you are involved in this with a passion. And I was telling some people this morning that passion means madness. That you are mad about Nigeria. I am. And I have no apology for that. Because I have no other country I can call my own. And I can't have no other country I can go to and say, yes, I have come to live here. And passion means having been mad about Nigeria, having a touch of madness. And I look at you and say, yes, you are mad. <laughs> the fourth one, and my passion, of course, embrace, embrace it. One is innovation. We cannot be doing the same thing that we have done in the past that did not pay us to continue to repeat it and accept any change. We have to move away from what has not worked for us. We have to innovate. We have to re strategize. And you talk about security. And people ask me about it. I say, I know that we can put all the security in Nigeria behind us within the space of two years. And I said that. Yes, sir. That we haven't done that and that we are still in the situation we are in. It's a, it's a choice that has been made by our leaders. Not the way God wants us to be. No political party. No small group of individuals can make a critical mass resolve the situation we are in. It has to be an all Nigerian hands on deck. No section of the Nigerian government should be left out. So I believe you have the knowledge. From what you have said, you have the vision. Also, you told me you have the madness. <laughs> and you have the innovation. But let me add, Nigeria is a complex And we need to understand the complexity of Nigeria. I 
at that complexity, they will take care of it. And you guys do not take the cocoon. 